Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're going to be taking a look in a few days at the DS419 Slim from Synology. And in the course of getting ready to review this device, I thought it might be fun to talk about how to expand your Synology disk volume, uh, because a lot of times people want to buy these things maybe with two drives in them, and then later add drives to the extra bays that you have. And this device, of course, has two extra bays that are not being used at the moment. Uh, they sent us a drive with just two SSDs in it. So I've got two more solid state drives that I want to pop in and make this volume larger. And one of the cool things you can do on Synology with their hybrid RAID thing is expand your NAS device without having to start it off from scratch. You don't have to back it up and then restore it. You can actually just add drives and make it bigger. But there are some things you have to think about and plan for in that process. And I thought I would do a little overview of that. And then we will pop those drives into this device and see how to expand it in practice. And we're going to get to all of that in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this little DS419 Slim is on loan from Synology. However, they are not paying for this review, nor are they reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. Synology is a past sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and learn about expanding our Synology volume. Now, before you buy a Synology NAS device, one of the things I suggest you check out is their RAID calculator. And this will allow you to figure out the best mix of hard drives to get to the storage capacity that you're looking for. Uh, the reason why this can get a little complicated is that you want your RAID device to have some redundancy so that if you lose a drive, your data is still safe and you can continue to operate while you take care of the bad drive that's in your device. And what we have set up here uh, is a two drive array uh, of four terabytes each. And I chose the SHR RAID type here. I covered the different RAID types in a video I did a few weeks ago that you may want to check out on setting up your Synology device uh, because in this video, we're strictly looking at expanding it after it's been set up. So you might want to watch that video first for some context. But the uh, most flexible arrangement you can have, I think, on one of these devices is the SHR RAID type, which stands for Synology Hybrid RAID. And this allows you to expand your RAID very easily. Now, SHR allows for one drive to fail. And that's why we've got four terabytes we can use and four terabytes that are used for protection. SHR2 will actually allow for two drives to fail, but of course we need at least four in here in order to have that level of protection. Now the rule of thumb here with SHR is that you will lose the uh, capacity of the largest drive that's in the array. So let me show you an example of what happens when you put a larger drive in here. So if I take out an eight terabyte drive and put it into position three, you'll see that we will have eight terabytes of usable space. Four terabytes will be reserved for drive protection, but there's going to be another four terabytes that is going completely unused because the way the math is working out here does not allow us to take advantage of the full capacity available. So let's add another drive to the mix here and see what happens. So I'm gonna drop in another eight terabytes now, and you'll see that we now have 16 terabytes available for our data and another eight terabytes here reserved for protection, but we are making full use of the capacity installed inside of this array. And remember on SHR, the largest drive is going to be what is taken away from your storage usage. And we have two eight terabyte drives and the uh, eight terabyte number is the largest. So that's the one that's set aside. Now SHR2 was not available to us before because that allows for two drives to fail. Now that we have four drives installed, we can have a two drive failure if we want to uh, install an SHR2 RAID type. Uh, that of course that will only give us half the capacity because we have to plan for double the failure. So we have eight terabytes we can use, eight terabytes unavailable, but there will be a eight terabyte section here that is going unused, again, because of how the math is working out here. And what you probably wanna do is jump into this calculator and look at all the different drives you are planning to use on your array and see how it might work in your particular situation. It's not hard, but it's something you really should plan ahead for. All right, so let's see how this works now in practice. We're gonna go over to our control panel here and go to the storage manager. And right now, it looks as though we've got an array of 215.4 gigabytes available of usable storage space. Now remember, we have two 240 gigabyte drives in here, but one is protecting the other. So that's why we only have the capacity of the single drive. 
Now what I'm going to do is add these two new drives to the mix. And these are both the same size, 240 gigabytes a piece. And this particular NAS device allows for hot swapping, so I can put these drives in without having to shut it down first. However, you'll want to check that your particular Synology NAS supports hot swapping. If it doesn't, you should shut it down first before you do what I just did. I also suggest no matter which uh, device you're using to back it up fully before you begin this process in case something goes wrong when the RAID array is expanded. Uh, good backup practices are important no matter what you do, even with a NAS with all this redundancy, and be sure you have something in place to make that happen. So let's go back to the control panel now, and you can see we have two unused drives available to us, and now it's time to assign them to the storage pool. So I'm gonna click on storage pool here, and you can see again that we've got 218 gigabytes of total capacity. I'm going to click on action here and add a drive to the mix. And I can add both of these now at the same time. And I'll click next. Uh, what's going to happen here is it's going to erase what is on both of these drives. That's OK. And we're going to do that and hit apply. And now you'll see that we'll have about 656 gigabytes available of total capacity after these two drives are added. I'm going to click on apply here. Now this is going to take some time to rebuild, but when it is done, we will have the capacity now of three of those drives available to us for data, and then 223 gigabytes will be set aside for data protection. You do ha have to wait though until this is done completely rebuilding to get access to it, and if you are planning down the road to add more capacity to a fully built out array like this one is now, you're gonna to need to do it one drive at a time in order to keep your data protected. Uh, one cool thing though is that we do have access to the array while it is rebuilding. It may run a little bit slower than it normally would, but it's otherwise available to us and it really won't interrupt your workday all that much, but you'll see it's working pretty hard here to get everything rebuilt as it is expanding out those two new drives that came uh, into the picture here. Okay, so some time has passed, several hours here, and my storage pool is now expanded to what you see here, 656.89 gigabytes. Now you'll also see that it's using uh, 219 or so right now, and this is not used up by my files, this is just what is assigned to a shareable volume on the Synology NAS here, and that's why you have to go in and expand your volume in addition to expanding your storage pool. So step one was getting the storage pool expanded, which we just did. Uh, step two now is to jump over to the volume here and assign that unused storage to the volume, because you can see right now that we're still at the original capacity we were at before. So what I'm gonna do here is go over to Action, and I'm going to click on Configure, and the next thing I'm going to do is max out the allocated size in gigabytes. So you can see right now we're at 218. Uh, the max allowed is 656. I'm just gonna click on max here to max that out and hit OK. And that will now give us the full 656 gigabytes now for this storage pool. And just like before, it's going to take some time to get all of this stuff going and we have to wait for that expansion to take place, but we can access our data in the interim, and once it is done, we will have the full available capacity of the new storage pool that we have configured. So it's pretty easy to do if you have SHR set up, uh, but I do suggest spending some time in that calculator to really figure out what's the best mix of storage for your needs, uh, because it's possible you could go out and buy a huge new hard drive and not gain the full potential of it if the storage mix isn't right on there, and that calculator is really helpful for figuring that out. I'm also gonna put a few helpful links down below in the video description for some support pages on Synology's website that'll give you a little bit more of an in-depth look at how to plan these things out. But remember, keep a good backup, because if something were to go wrong in the course of this expansion or whatever, you could have some data loss, and we don't want that. So do a backup, and then start swapping in those new drives, and of course, check out the calculator to plan all of it out. We're gonna have a full review of this coming up very shortly, and until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.